Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III and today I'm doing a paid review. This is for James. Hi Archie, I want to share my current watch collection with you as well as ask you for advice on my next purchase. I'm originally a Melbourne boy, now living and working in Bangkok three years so far. I started my love affair with watches on my 18th birthday when my grandmother opened up a briefcase with all of my late grandfather's watches. If I knew what I know now, I probably would have picked out the gold vintage sub, but the gunmetal grey Amiga Constellation caught my eye. I love it just the same. This was my everyday watch until my 30s when I bought an Omega Moonwatch Gemini 4. I love this watch as it's the one that gets the most compliments. I recently put a blue Perlon strap on it just to change it up a bit. My dad recently gave me his Rolex Submariner 5513, lucky boy, plastic sub, no date. I'm the second owner of this watch and will treasure it always. It's funny, I never liked Rolex until I actually owned one. The simple graphic layout of the piece and the way it feels on the wrist is pure synergy. Most recently I bought a Tudor Heritage, great for the beach. An IWC Mark 17, my biggest my biggest piece in the collection and a 1950s Breitling Venus I bought this one on eBay and it could possibly be a fake or reconditioned but I love the look but it never failed a hunt felt a hundred percent about it since it arrived in the mail the seller has a good rep it still feels funny hmm I'm currently I'm eyeing off three watches all around the thirteen to fifteen thousand mark. The first is the new Daytona with the black bezel and white face. As I'm sure you know, it's hard to reach the shops, and I'll have to wait a while to expect it. I believe this watch will be very sought after, as it resembles the 1960s Paul Newman Panda style. Second is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Ultra Thin with the blue face, 15202. I know how you feel about APs, but fuck, it feels good on my wrist. And lastly is the Paddock Aquanaut Jumbo in Steel with the black rubber, 5167. This watch feels great on and doesn't look too flashy, which is what I like about it. Mm, okay, let's quickly go through his collection there. Let's have a look. Fuck, he really made a mistake on that constellation. Fuck, a vintage gold sub. Fuck! Fuck! Can you go back to Grandma and swap it? You've got a, uh, you've got an Amiga Moonwatch Gemini 4. Cool. You've got a 5513 no date sub plastic. That's cool. And you got a Tudor Heritage. That's great. IWC Mark 17. Yes, that's okay. The 1950s Breitling Venus. Ooh, I don't like, don't like the sound of this here. If you're in doubt, if you send me some good pics, I'll send it to a, uh, a Breitling expert friend of mine. Now, what would I buy? Now, for starters, I think the Daytona. Yes, that's okay. The AP. I think the... 15202 is actually a bit more than that. I think that price is for a 15400, which is still a really cool watch. And the Aquanaut, Patek Aquanaut, I tell you what I would go with personally. Personally, Whew, out of that range there, what would I go for? I'd probably, I gotta be honest with you, the Patek, I always have a problem by paying so much for something on a fucking rubber strap. That just fucking irritates me so I'd probably not I'd give I'd miss that one the Daytona the Rolex is so passe it's passe I reckon the AP if you can get a 15202 that's a cool watch otherwise get a 15400 Royal Oak that is a that's just a fucking snazzy cool fuck off watch yes it's delicate yes you gotta be very careful with it yes the service is fucking ridiculous <laughs> But I still think, <clears throat> given those choices there, I'd jump into the AP. I know it's a bitch. I know it's fucking nasty. But reading your email, you come from a moneyed family. You know what to expect. You know, you know what cunters these watches can be. Come on. You're from a wealthy family. 
you know, it takes a bit of coin to service them, but go for the AP. Fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. <coughs> go for the AP. <clears throat> 15400 or a 15200. I mean, the 15202 is super special, but I think they're a bit over 20. I'm, I'm not an AP encyclopedia, but even the 15400 is such a cool watch. Don't take it anywhere near water. Don't take it anywhere near water because they're no very little waterproofing. Regardless of what they say, don't take it near water. That is a fucking cool watch. Archie Luxury out. Tell me what you nasty, vicious, venomous fuckers think of that. Nice one, Archie. Great vid. We specialize here in pre-owned Rolex watches. Rolex watch is a very special timepiece and we always do the servicing exactly as factory specifications. We buy a pre-owned piece and we put it into brand new condition. We have Rolex certified technicians working on that. We completely disassemble the piece, we adjust and polish and change every single part of the watch. You have to have certified watchmakers that know what they're doing. If you have an expensive car, you're just not going to bring it to any mechanic that doesn't know what they're doing. You spent $5,000. It's like if you put money in the safe deposit box. And one or two years from now, you will keep having your $5,000. We have to spend a lot of money to get all this equipment together, but makes me feel I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It's not a question of money, it's my passion. Jewelers on time, simply the best.